Well, hi, this is Jay Arthur, and let's talk about value stream mapping for Lean. I call it Lean Simplified. And let, let me introduce you to the power tools for this. They're called post notes. I use the square ones for activities and the arrows for the gaps between activities. And let me give you an example. Uh, I worked with a group a while back, and it was taking them 140 days to process uh, a transaction, if you will. And that just seemed entirely too long. And so what we did was we started to lay out the value stream, the map of what happened. And first step, log the request. And then they'd evaluate the request. And then they'd research the request. And then they'd decide if the request was valid or not. Then they'd schedule an exam, diagnose the patient, and treat that patient. Now at this time, this 140 days was the fastest of anywhere in the nation. Now, I always use these little arrows to show the time in between. But here's what I've learned from working in a lean environment with many different kinds of processes. You quickly discover that maybe three minutes out of every hour are spent with people doing something or machines doing something, but the other 57 minutes are all spent, the product's waiting on something to happen. I call this the 357 rule. So what happened here was I asked them, I said, okay, so how long does it take to log the request? And they said, ah, maybe five minutes. I said, okay. And then how long does it take to evaluate the request? And they said, ah, 25 days. I said, really? You got one guy, one sheet of paper? working on this for 25 days? And they said, well, no, uh, actually, you know, it's maybe 30, 40 minutes um, to evaluate the request. And I said, oh, so there's 25 days of delay. They said, yeah. I said, okay, so what happens next? Well, we researched the request. Really? I said, how long does that take? And they said, 120 days. I said, really, 120 days, one guy, one sheet of paper? And they well, no. That might take an hour. I said, so there's a 120 day delay. And very quickly you discover out of this 140 day process, you know a lot of it is stuck in these, these two boxes right here. Then if it's okay, they schedule the exam. I said, how long does that take? Maybe 10 minutes. Uh, how long before you actually get to do the exam? Well, as much as seven days. And then it might be, you know, maximum one day before we get around to treatment. The diagnosis, maybe an hour. Uh, the treatment, that could be ongoing. So what you discover here is in that 140 plus days, there was only seven hours of real work in the entire process. So once you've mapped the value stream, then you want to figure out, well, how can I redesign this to get rid of these big delays, especially that one and this one on top of it? I said, well, could you just log the request and get right into evaluating it? Well, maybe. I said, well, can you do the research request in the background? And the, the doctor said, well, we can usually tell from uh, looking at the patient whether what they're asking for was really caused by what they say it was caused by. And so literally, we could take it and go straight to schedule exam, eval, schedule, and get right into diagnosis. And they actually cut this process down to about a maximum of 30 days now. And that's how easy it is to redesign and reevaluate a process using value stream mapping. In the background here, I have a picture of, uh, of a painting of Jimi Hendrix by a guy named Denny Dent. And if you go on YouTube, you can watch Denny paint this particular picture in about three and a half minutes. It's four feet by five feet. And he gave me permission to be a little bit more loosey-goosey with the value stream mapping process. You can get into all kinds of detail telling what each one of these things does, but until you get rid of these giant delays, all those little things, irrelevant. Anyway, that's the essence of value stream mapping and speeding up your processes. Thanks.